Welcome to Shoreline Conversations. I'm your host, Keith, and today we are in episode six of this series we're doing on Organic Disciples. And today we're gonna to be talking about joyful generosity. We get to talk about money a little bit, amongst other things, but that's our starting point. So I'm here with Pastor Kevin, and once again, thank you for being here. It's a joy. I'm looking forward to talking through generosity today. Yeah. yeah. It really is a tough topic, I yeah, think. Yeah. Why, why do you think joyful generosity is such a, mm -hmm. a hot topic today? Yeah, you know, it's, I've been a pastor now. I'm pressing towards uh, into my fourth decade of being a pastor. And this is I've one of I've been alive for four decades. There you go. There you go. Well, <laughs> listen, Junior, let me tell you. Uh, but, but honestly, it's, it's one of those topics that seems to ruffle feathers and create people, a little tension in people. If you say, you know, yeah, it's important to read the Bible. You know, we talked about Bible engagement a couple weeks ago. It's like, okay, okay, yeah, I get that. Uh, you, know, it's, you should pray. You're a Christian. You should pray. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm in. You should give some of your money back to God. Oh, yeah, hold on. Absolutely. Hit the brakes. You know, it's, 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 it goes from what for some people feels theoretical and religious mm -hmm. to deeply practical. But actually, all of our faith is deeply practical. But, <clears throat> but people can perceive it that way. And so I think that people just get uh, protective of their stuff. Um, I worked for this. I earned this. It's mine. And, and then there's people, even people who are generous. But there's kind of this, but it's none of your business. And so this this is sort of a hot button for some people, and uh, and it doesn't surprise me. Right. And it doesn't, as a pastor, it doesn't bother me. There's people. Uh, years ago, I had an older gentleman in my in the church, the first church I was an intern at when I was in seminary, and I preached in a, a message and a message. I had a significant portion of it talking about just learning to be generous with it. God's given us everything, and we should give back to God and for His work and help people in need. Right. And and this older gentleman comes up to me and says, "You know, Pastor." Uh, Right when you got talking about giving in that in that sermon there, he says, uh, "My hearing aid, the battery died," <laughs> and he's like, and I, at first I was like, and then I realized, oh, what his point is, when he turned off, he was done, right. and, I, and I thought, I thought, that's kind of sad yeah. because I had learned at that point in my spiritual journey that there's something wonderful about mm -hmm. generosity, and I think this guy's going to miss out. Right, and I think that some of it maybe isn't even about intentionally doing it, yeah. as well, right? So yeah. there's that added layer. I think yeah. about when I, I'm talking to my my children. Uh, I don't tell them how much money I, I make. Yeah. Uh, I don't tell them how much money yeah. we give away. Yeah. Um, we yeah. talk in like generalized terms. Yeah. And, and I'm, and I'm, I mean, lots of people would probably say, that's great. And others would say, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. You should let them know the details. Yeah. But even within that, it's not like I'm intentionally trying to make this a uh, tough topic. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. what is appropriate? What yeah. What's an yeah. okay thing? Yeah. Like I don't ever say, Hey kids, just so you know, I, I generally sometimes read the Bible. Yeah, and uh, you know, you know, pray. F okay, I'm not going to tell you when I pray or how I pray or when I read Keep the Bible and how yeah, I do that's, it. Right, that's, that's personal. Like, <laughs> right, I don't, yeah. I don't do that. Yeah, um, but with money, it just seems yeah. like that's yeah. the way it is. Yeah, so I'm trying to navigate that in my yeah. own life, and so maybe today I'll get some. Well, my my some dad had a had a you know one of those uh, attitudes about money. It's like um, he, if if on a, a form you had to, you know it's a, your income you know right. it's kind of like nydb <laughs> you know none of your darn business is, is i think it's that my guess that's what he what he meant you know but he, he was just writing he just wrote it's none of your business i'm not going to uh, tell you that yeah. and um you know, that, there's there's so there's a lot tied in there mm -hmm. yeah yeah i actually had to just do that yesterday on something and i was yeah. thinking the same thing why do you need to know this yeah yeah because they need to know how much they can tap into me for yeah money or something i don't know yeah well, how much of that can I have? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it's looking yeah. at. Um, so tell us y your story yeah. of learning about, as we're talking about, biblical yeah. call to joyful generosity. Yeah. So I you know, I grew up in a home. Both my parents were very generous in certain ways, generous to people that they loved and cared about, generous to their family. Um, my mom was big into volunteering in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they also would open up their home to people. Now, I grew up in a home where, where it was really... Uh, kind of an agnostic slash atheistic home and worldview. But I didn't, you know, my parents weren't uh, stingy or unkind people. Right. They were they were gracious. They'd be generous in certain circumstances with what they liked and with people they wanted to help. But in those right. cases, they, they, they didn't hold things tight. They were generous. Uh, but I didn't grow up around an environment where I saw somebody uh, live out a sense that all I have is a gift from God and mm -hmm. that I should be regularly giving back towards the work of the church, the things of Jesus, because that wasn't even in the framework of my life. So when I became a Christian, 
I really carried my life experience into my Christianity, which I think is pretty, I mean, we, do that, we right? take, we take sure. what we know and figure that that, and we can almost sort of sanctify that and they say, that, well, that's the norm because that's how I've lived. And it took time for me to have a different worldview. And you'd think that the fact that I was reading the Bible a lot and the Bible just talks a ton I mean, a ton about gener gen being generous with our time, with our love, with our words, but also with our resources. Right. But that had kind of either it missed me or I had sort of put up my own little block. Right. Uh, but I wasn't getting the message. And then it was my fiance, uh, who I was hoping would soon become my wife, who really challenged me. And Sherry, uh, who grew up in a home where she saw faithful, joyful generosity, where her parents not only gave faithfully, but they looked for excuses to give. They really, and they would actually, um, you know, not have things as a family so they could actually give towards the things of Jesus. She watched her whole, she breathed the air of that her whole life. So that became part of her lifestyle. When she got a couple summer jobs, uh, she grew up in Holland, Michigan, uh, working in the, in the blueberry fields. Uh, she'd give the first 10% that, you know, and the biblical term is tithe, which just means 10th. Right. Uh, she gave that first 10% to God's work in her church. And she mm -hmm. was like thrilled to do it. Great. This is fine. It's normal. It's life. And then we collided because right. I wasn't there and she was there. And so my journey became studying the scriptures and grappling with what the Bible says and really coming to a clear, not just conclusion, but conviction mm -hmm. that, um, that not only should we be joyfully generous, both the attitude and the action, but that it's the best way to live. And now, and my journey since then has been one of, I love to be generous. I look for excuses to be generous. And, and, and I'm not saying this so everybody listening can come and ask me to borrow money. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about towards the things of Jesus and whoever you are, you're not Jesus. Uh, but 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 even even when I see needs or even when there's an opportunity, I, I, the other day I got a receipt from a mm -hmm. donation I gave. And I thought, oh, I had forgotten I'd given a donation. And I'm trying to think what it was to. It was to some ministry that gets the Bible out around the world or something. Right. I, don't, I just, I saw it and it struck me and... And I thought I probably gave a hundred bucks or 250 bucks or something to it. And I, so I scrolled down because I had to print it out to put in my right, files for my taxes. taxes. And, and I was like, whoa, that's pretty, I was like, I, was, <laughs> I seriously was like, I, was, I said, wow, I, would, I wouldn't think I would have given that much. But I, in the moment I just, and, and Sherry and I have agreed that we can give away what we have um, without asking each other if we really pray and feel like. So it, it was clear at that moment I saw this need. I thought, you know, I want to get behind this. And, and then I forgot about it mm -hmm. because it's not about, keeping track of it except for you know except for taxes as a write-off mm -hmm. but it's not to me it's not about keeping track of it as much as just responding so that's my journey has come from giving nothing in terms of financially right. to giving aggressively and generously and having fun doing it and looking looking how to raise the bar so i've, I've come i personally come from a, t a total kind of metamorphosis a whole transformation in how i see giving that's great. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to touch on this a little bit later, but um, when I ask you a question that I know I want to wrap up later, but yeah. but I'm getting this idea that you're talking about you and your wife, yeah. that it, we've got our individual joyful generosity, yep. but then as we're in relationships, yeah. we've got to work things out with, yeah. our, with our spouses. Yeah. We've got to consider our, our children and yep. other obligations that we have. And so... Yeah. Um, but it starts with really what we're talking about today, and it's, yeah. it's about the the attitude and yeah. the heart yeah. uh, and the and the perspective. Now, I I know you know I want to ask you because you I I know that you get passionately enthusiastic when when you feel God opens the door for you to respond to it, and I know giving is something for you that you have stretched yourself and even you talk about and I just thought of it because you talk about your family is part right. of it, right? Um, that there's been times where you said, we're going to do something less as a family. Right. So as a family, we can be more generous. Why, why do you do that? What's taking you to that place? Oh, man. And it's interesting because I have one of these right now. Yeah. So yesterday I, uh, I saw uh, a GoFundMe mm -hmm. um, account for, for a young man that I, that I know his family and he's dealing with some, some medical issues and yeah. he needs some money. And, uh, like we, we have to give, yeah. right? Like I, yeah. I know it's GoFundMe. So people are going to come and they're going to rally yeah. around. Yeah. Um, but I, but I think God wants us to be part of this, yeah. and I think that's where it is. Yeah. Um, I want to do what honors God. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's my money, it's my time, it's yeah. it's it's what I fill my mind with. Um, yeah. And so I just, I I truly have been able to embrace the idea that what I have is from God. Yeah. And it, and it, it wasn't an easy thing for me to get there because yeah. really I th I always thought like no I worked hard. Yeah, like I yeah. put myself through yeah. school. I've built up this experience. I'm using the yeah. the skills that I have developed. Yeah. yeah. But I got to a place where I said, "Well, I didn't 
decide to be born where I was in the family yeah. where I was with the school yeah. environments that I was able to get into with the, mm-hmm. the even the upbringing that I had yeah. of you work hard. Like, yeah. I didn't create that. Not like, everyone has that. No, yeah. I, yeah. Like, that was what I got from my family. Yeah. Um, and and ultimately it's because God placed me there. Yeah. And my skills, my abilities, my my opportunity to to earn a living and to work yeah. came from him. And I, mm-hmm. and I know that. Yeah. And so it, it it's still hard. I can tell you each time there's an opportunity, I know I want to give, but I but I think through all of the pieces that are in that. Yeah. Like, okay, so yeah, what is my family going to do? And and uh, yeah, I've brought this up a few times over the years. Like, if I'm going to give to this thing, does that mean my children aren't going to be able to play baseball this mm-hmm. season? Mm-hmm. Like, because I I can't. It's got to come from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And and it could come from maybe my savings mm-hmm. if I'm able in a season to do that. Yeah. Or it can come out one of my hobbies or something. Yeah. And that's the thing. For me, it's super easy, right? I'll wear the same pair of jeans for five years yeah. and go, hey, I don't need to do it. But like my kids I are- wanna, I don't want to bring that up, <laughs> but I know. But like my kids are growing, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. If they wear their same jeans for five years, they're, they're going to be shorts, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, they, won't, they won't fit. And so I, there, there's a lot to consider in yeah. that. But I, like I said, it starts with my heart and my, my yeah. desire to honor God. Yeah. Um, and I think it leads my family well mm-hmm. to, to share that. And it's yeah. fantastic. My wife's on the same page. Yeah. You know, as we were talking about this opportunity that we're we're literally praying mm-hmm. about right now. Yeah. Um, not right now as in this second, um, but right yeah. now, yeah. today. Um, what is this what are we gonna give up yeah. in order to help out in this yeah. way? Yeah. Um, because I, I know I know that we're gonna be able to be part of yeah. something that God's doing. Yeah. Um and it's going to cost us giving back yeah. a little bit of what he's given us. And so yeah. um, I'm actually excited about the opportunity. Yeah. You know? and, and and the thing is, some people can go, oh, well, if it's going to cost you something that's difficult, then there, you can't do it with joy. <laughs> but what you learn with time is that choice to give something up, that choice to sacrifice, and seeing how that decision and then giving over here impacted someone. There's a depth of joy that it sometimes can be greater than whatever that other thing was right. I was going to do. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and an interesting thing is like to through a GoFundMe, I actually could go through my head. Do I put my name on there so that they know I wasn't like passing this buyer? Do I do it anonymously mm-hmm. so that it's truly just a pure mm-hmm. gift, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Haven't landed on that, you know? Yeah. But, but I love the the thought process mm-hmm. that goes behind that yeah. to, again, do it in a way that will honor God. And and yeah. he'll give us the answers. He'll yeah. tell us the amount that to do and yeah. and we'll just yeah. follow through with there it you on go. that. Um, so as we talk about this whole series is organic disciples, it's about being more like Jesus. Yeah. How was Jesus generous? Mm. You know, did yeah. he have money that was regularly taken out of his direct deposit and given to things? Exactly. Or, you know? 15th of every month. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you, you can't read the gospels and not be profoundly moved by the generosity of Jesus. Uh, even just leaving the glory of heaven, you know, you talk about limiting something, downgrading. I'm going to downgrade for the sake of being generous. Uh, there's no greater downgrade than the glory of heaven to the filth of a stable. There's no greater a, a conscious choice mm-hmm. to downgrade from angelic praise to the just the darkness of this world. And so I think Jesus, his generosity, even, even his coming among us, an act of generosity, his time. Uh, and, and generosity, you know, we, we focus... Uh, the Bible focuses a lot on generosity with our material goods, and we'll talk about that. Right. But but you know, Jesus gave his time. He gave words of blessing. He was generous with encouragement towards people. Uh, he he was generous in, in every way, ultimately giving his life. Right. Uh, but Jesus laid down whatever he could to be a blessing to other people. Mm-hmm. And so gen- Jesus' generosity kind of covers every aspect of life and uh, is, is this perfect example of how we're supposed to live our lives. And so I, I think that Jesus modeled passionate, joyful surrender uh, for the blessing of others, for the glory of God. And we who follow him uh, need to say, that's, you know, he he's my leader. He's my model. If he sacrificed everything to bless others, I better learn how to sacrifice right. something, right. you know? And our thing is not even everything. It's just, I got to get started doing something. Right. And, uh, and so that, you know, G- Jesus was, was generous beyond any person who's ever lived or ever mm-hmm. will live. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. You just said joyful. Yeah. Uh, and, and that reminds me of Romans 12. It says, uh, Paul says, be joyful in affliction. Yeah. I'm like, that seems really hard. Yeah. Uh, and as we look 
I mean, it seems really, really hard. Yeah. Um, but you said Jesus was joyful. Yeah. Uh, and affliction was, yeah. uh, I mean, he sacrificed yeah. his yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. How do you see Jesus actually yeah. being joyful yeah. in yeah. this generosity? Yeah. There's a scripture that there's a scripture that says, and for the joy set before him, right. he endured the cross. Right. You go, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. So you talk about generosity when he gave his life, his life breath, he laid himself down, he went on the cross, he took our sins, and in the in that offer of, of life that Jesus gives to us, um, it costs him something. It cost him everything, right? But that idea for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. How can being crucified be a source of joy? Well, it's because of the end result of it. Mm-hmm. So Jesus, I, I I believe, I believe on the cross. Jesus knew your name, he knew your needs, he loved you, and he gave his life on the cross. He knew my name, he knew my brokenness, my hurt, um, my wandering, and he gave his life for me. And he did it out of joy because he knew I opened the door so I could come to him. It doesn't, that didn't mean, you know, God desires, the Bible says that God desires none would perish, all would come to a knowledge of salvation. So salvation is big enough for everyone, but it's only applied to those who accept it. You know, it's offered, but only some receive it. But but Jesus's generosity is infinite, mm-hmm. and and his in the midst of all of that there was a joy. Even even there's a sense on the cross that there was not a happy, oh look, isn't this fun joy? But a sense of that Jesus understood what he was doing, the price he was paying, and so all through Jesus's uh, sacrificing, surrendering, giving, uh, there was a sense of joy because of the end result. And mm-hmm. I think it's very much like you talking about this thing that that you and Shannon are praying about right now and looking at it, you're going, okay, when we finally make that decision, when we finally give something, there is a sacrifice, there's a count, you know, we count the cost, but there, there will be this united sense of joy. And and you'll probably try to, if in the right moment, get your kids on board too and go, we we get to be part of this. Absolutely. We get to touch this person's life and, and their, hopefully their eventual medical solution or whatever happens, um, we can say, you know, we got to be a little part of that Absolutely. and it costs us something, but man, that's worth it. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's the joy. And I think Jesus looks and goes, this is, it's worth it. Yeah. Be, and the, the advantage Jesus has is he's God. And so he, he's got, I, th- I think he's got more foresight than he can see right. where things are going. What, you know, but, but we can anticipate and look and go, I can imagine how this can make an impact on others or the heart of God. And that brings joy. Yeah. yeah. And, and I can say from my own life, I, I have I've truly seen change in my life mm-hmm. um, as I've grown in this spiritual mark of joyful generosity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how would you describe either for you personally or, you know, for us as a whole, mm-hmm. as a whole and individuals, how do our lives change when we grow in this spiritual mark of joyful generosity? Hmm. Well, one thing that happens is there's a whole attitudinal shift. I think that we're, we're raised in our culture and by just by our own human nature, to look and go, this is my iPad. Yeah. This is my baby. Now it actually belongs to Shoreline right. Church. And if God called me to go somewhere else, so, which I'm not expecting him to, but it's like I couldn't take it with me. But right. but right now it's mine. So so if somebody just grabbed it and walked off with it, um, I'd be like, well, hey, that's my that's mine. Right. You know, I look at the home that we have, and sure, and I didn't think we'd ever own a home. That was one of the deals I made with her before I got married that we probably wouldn't own a home, and she had to be okay with that because. Interest rates were over 14%. We lived in Southern California. I was going to have an income of a pastor. She wanted to raise our kids and be at home with the kids. So it's like, that's not in the, but we actually, by God's grace, we have a house. Um, It's our house in a sense, but it's also, but we also live with a sense that it's God's house. And so uh, we have a guest preacher coming into town and they're going to be staying at our house. And there's been times that we, that we're away and we've had other you know, people in ministry or people that don't get much of a break to Monterey's a great place to come. We say, yeah. hey, come out and spend a week at our house and, and just make yourself at home. And, and we've had a couple of times where we have people stay there where things got, they come damaged. in with families and kids, things got <laughs> damaged or, or what, you know, whatever. Uh, there's a, a, one of our chairs, uh, some kid must've written on it with a pen, with a piece of paper, but it was like, like 40 or five, 50 like scratches. And so it's like, I mean, that, that's part of the deal. Right. But you go, okay, well, where's, where's the joy in that? You know, how does this joyful, how does it you know, change you? Well, God's chair has scratches on it now. You know, that it's, 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 it's ours. It's stewarded. We're stewards. It's given to us to be care for. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it doesn't belong to us. We can't take it with us. And so there, there can be sort of this like this. Yes. I don't have to be as uptight about everything yes. because now I want to honor God and take good care of the things he's entrusted to us. Mm-hmm. But. I really, ha- I think I'm less wound up about stuff. The more I become aware 
that this is a gift from the Lord. My perspective changes about material things. And, and another thing that happens too is that I think that you can move away from identifying your own value and worth by what you have, which is also very common in our culture. Right. What kind of car do you drive? What kind of house do you live in? What kind of, you know, what kind of clothes do you wear? All these different things that uh, kind of define who you are. Mm-hmm. When you grow in joyful generosity, there's an outlook that just says, that just says, I'm not, I'm not about the accumulation of stuff. And so there's a lot of freedom that comes. There's a lot of, um, and, and, and then I'll share one more thing and there's all kinds of things kind of sure. run around my mind, but uh, the, life becomes kind of an adventure. Where you're like, okay, what can we do? How can we? How can we help? How can we be part of that? And if we're if we're like, you know, white knuckle, tight fisted, holding everything to ourselves, it's mine, mine, mine. We never get to go. Well, but maybe God has something we can do with this um, that would be a blessing to others. In the same way, going back to you and, and Shannon, you're going, okay, you're sorting this thing out because God has sparked your heart to say, maybe this isn't for us. Maybe this is for somebody else. That, that's, there's something fun about that. I love it. There's something exciting about sitting down and. And thinking and saying, well, what can we do with this? You know, maybe maybe you have a little extra income that you weren't expecting. Right. And so, well, we could do this fun thing with our family, and we could take a portion of this, and let's just talk together, maybe as a family, right. and say, hey, we got you know, we got a few hundred dollars that are extra. What's something we could do to be a blessing? Right. And so, there's that excitement of of what might God do through our lives. And I all I have a theory. Um, I think I think that I, it's proven true in many lives of people, you know, kind of anecdotally of people I've watched, that the more someone gets excited about and and lives a generous life. Mm -hmm. I think that God will at times steward more to them because the good things he gives go through them to bless others. Not always. There's people that get more, 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 and they never share a thing. There's people that would be very generous. They don't have a lot. So it's not an absolute, but I think there's times where God sees a heart of an individual, of a couple of a family. And God knows if I, if I entrust more to them, it's going to flow out in a really strategic, beautiful way. And I think God delights in that. And so I think it changes our character. Yeah. It gives me a picture of this past year. Um, I was driving my daughter's car uh, and I pulled into our front of our house uh, and it quickly caught on fire and the, the car burned up. And wow. so uh, uh, it just was sitting gone in front of your house, just sitting in front of my house. Wow. It was kind of fun to see them shut down the road and have all the fire department come there. I guess it's a big deal when cars catch on fire because they don't know what's going to happen. It could blow gonna up. going to explode yeah, or yeah, something like yeah. that. I, I, you know, I texted a few of my friends and said, hey, just want to let you know what happened with us. Um, and then one of the friends texted me back and said, I have a car for you. Hmm. God wants you to have this car. Hmm. Well, I get this picture because this friend does continue to be blessed yeah. Uh, yeah. in their generosity. And it. It's it's an amazing thing to see. Yeah. Uh, now they also get to see that my daughter is driving this car that yeah. they get, and so see the joy in her face all yeah. of the time and yeah. just like wow. I mean that's a neat thing. And I'm dreaming of when will I be able to give somebody a car? Like yeah. that would be a, yeah. a neat thing yeah. to be able to do. Um, that is a fun and exciting thing. Mm-hmm. So what about the person who says, "Yeah, I totally get this. God calls us to be generous. I've got nothing. I can't. Yeah. yeah. What am I supposed to do?" And what do you tell them? Yeah. And I've, I've run into that through my years as a pastor where people will say, I'm going to start giving when I have something to give. And, and all, all I can say is invariably, um, these are people I know a little bit or a lot. I can look at them and think, oh man, it's a perspective deal. Right. Cause you could, you could be, you know, um, one of the, one of the beauties of the idea of tithing, which is just, the, it's a biblical principle. It's not a law. It's not like you're not a Christian if you don't do it. It's not like you're a better Christian if you do, but it's, it's a, it's sort of a, a biblical vision and practice that many people embrace where the first 10%, first 10%, not the last 10%, right. you give towards the work of Jesus in some capacity. And so, you know, f- for me, if I gave the last 10%, by the time I got there, it'd be gone. If you give the first 10%, it's there. So when I first started working through this with my fiance, with Sherry, um, I was making 400 a month working for New Hope Church in Glendora, California, and uh, $100 a month. And we were, I was living on that, but I was going behind every month. I mean, I was struggling financially. I didn't have, didn't have a lot. And yet when I got this vision, I thought, okay, I make 100 bucks, 10 bucks. Now, some of you can listen and go, that doesn't sound like a lot of money. It felt like a ton of money back then. That's back when we, got, when we first got married. Every two weeks, I got $5 to do whatever I wanted with. 
So I got 250. 250 was enough at that time to have a frozen yogurt or to split a basket of fries with, with mm -hmm. Sherry. So we, so, I, so we would like every week or two, we'd go out to uh, Bananas Over Frozen Yogurt on our way to the church office or to Chili's because Chili mm -hmm. would have a big old honking bag of fr right. uh, basket of fries for a decent price. And then they didn't charge for the ketchup. And I love a lot oh, of ketchup on my fries. Deal. So, uh, but it's like, it's like, so 10 bucks was a lot of money, but that was our rhythm of life. And, and so it would have been really easy in that season of my life where a, a medium frozen yogurt felt like a complete luxury and only once every two weeks to say, I don't have enough. I can't do this. Uh, I've talked with people who have way more than we had at that point in our lives right. uh, and who say, I don't, I really can't, I don't have anything to give. I've talked to people who say, well, I'll start giving when I have enough. And what I know that means is they'll never start giving right. because you never have enough to be generous unless you decide to be generous. Right. And, and then I also, this is just a personal, uh, like a, a, a thing that's a challenging thing is when somebody says, well, I don't have enough money, but I know how they live their life. I know what they spend money on. I know what they devote money to. And so you don't have any money because you spend all the money right. you get on stuff. And some of the stuff is stuff that's not even good for you or healthy or, or worthwhile. Right. But, you know, so, so I think we can all leverage ourselves where we have nothing to give, mm -hmm. or we can choose to live in a way that opens the doors of of our lives to be generous with with others, and so I I, I think that even uh, we've we've had people here at Shoreline. We had, Shoreline's interesting because we have people who live in a, you know a gated community where Clint Eastwood have his home has his home, and it's a very you know it's a very I think it's you know one point five million to buy a plot of land to right. build on before you even break ground. You already you know so that, that's and then we have people who live on the streets, right? And we have people from both those worlds that come and connect at Shoreline Church. And you could have somebody who lives up in this gated community and feel like they don't have enough money to give. And somebody who's living on the streets who says, you know, I could give something. Right. Because if there's breath in our lungs and if we're living another day, there's something, there's a way we can be generous. And, and with, with care, with love, with encouragement, and I think even, even with resources. Mm -hmm. it, it may be something very simple. And that's the beauty of God's design of generosity, that one of those things of, of okay, give first and give a percentage. If somebody, if somebody makes, you know, 100 bucks a week, they go, okay, ten, it's 10 bucks. If somebody makes $10,000 a week, they can say, well, you know, I can give $1,000. Right. And the person who's making $100 a week, God's not looking and saying, give me 1,000. He's saying, look at it. You know, let your heart see how good I've been to you. Look at it as a gift. Look at it as something I stewarded to you. And there's something about that act of giving that changes our hearts, our outlook, uh, and everything just begins to change when you live into that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm thinking through just the numbers you just said. Ten dollars doesn't seem like a lot, but then when you say, "I got to give a thousand dollars because I made ten thousand a week," that's that seems like a lot because it's so much more money. I can't afford to give so much. Yeah, <laughs> but it's still just ten percent. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a good start. And and would you would you rather be right. in a position where you're giving ten dollars <laughs> of your hundred a week? Or a thousand of your ten thousand. Absolutely, pick I'd one of those to... options, right? And yeah. somebody might say, "Well, ten, you know, a thousand—that's so much I can't do it." It's like, well, but but you're giving out of what you have, mm -hmm. but it, and it can feel radically different. But it's like, I I'd rather if it was up to me, if sure. I could make the call, I'd rather give the thousand out of my ten thousand than the ten out of my hundred. Absolutely, because then I'm living on ninety. I'm living on nine thousand mm -hmm. a week, or, you know, and that's just numbers. Yeah. But right. but the concept, yeah, yeah, we. You said, you know, you have, you probably have more than you think. Yeah. Uh, over, over the years in different areas, I've, I've come to a place where I've had to take an inventory. Uh, time mm -hmm. is, is, an, is another one. Yeah. You know, as we talk about like biblical engagement or we're going to talk about humble service and you go, hey, I don't have any time. I don't have time to spend, you know, an hour, you know, mm -hmm. reading God's yeah. word. Mm -hmm. Like, well, how much time do you spend watching TV? Yeah. Well, you don't want to give that up, do you? Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, if you gave that up, then maybe you'd have that time. Yeah, uh, yeah. And and as I've looked at my generosity over the years, there's been that same kind of thing. Yeah. I could look at what cable yeah. plan I do have. Do yeah. I even need to have yeah. one? You know, yeah. or what my cell phone plan is, and do I need to have the unlimited yeah. data yeah. with all yeah. of? I mean, you can look at the yeah. different little. How many yeah. times do I go out and have a coffee yeah. or those kinds of things? Now you know? you're talking craziness. <laughs> now you're, so, you know, see, so so here's the thing: you have people are going to people listening who are going to go. Now that's just ridiculous. Now you're talking crazy talk. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to limit my you know internet plan. I'm not going to give up my coffee. I'm not going to. I mean, that's just crazy talk, right? And you want to go? Wait a minute. No, it's. If you go, well, I can't afford to do this, but I can't afford to do all these other things. Um, and G it was Jesus who said, where your treasure is there, your heart will right. be also. The question is, where's your heart? Mm -hmm. And if you're, and I'm not talking to non-believers. I'm talking to somebody who's come to the cross. They've received the grace of Jesus. 
they understand that he's given them eternal life and called them to give their life back to him. It's like, you know, it's, it's not that complicated. And, and what you were describing, I think many Christians wouldn't even ponder that idea. Right. You mean, I, I would choose to give something up so I could give more away. And it's like, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's, that's an option it is. that's allowed. And, 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 and you might find a greater joy in life than if you're spending all your life accumulating, holding on to, you know, polishing, shining, insuring, protecting stuff and barely have enough time to even enjoy it. All right. Or if you say, no, I want to become generous and see what that can do to kind of echo out into the world with the love and the grace and the help of Jesus through that. You're like, man, it's, it, that's where the joy comes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as we talked about stuff and money. Is, is generosity just about money yeah. or is there, is there more to it than that? Well, I think you look at the life of Jesus, it's everything. It's just everything. It's your time. It's your words. Are you generous with blessing and encouragement? The Bible talks a lot about blessing. Um, are, are you generous with caring and helping? But, but you know, when we talk about the seven markers or in the seven-week series or this eight-week series on organic disciples, but these seven markers, you know, humble service is one of them. So that's, that, that is a kind of generosity. Um, you know, worship and praise. That's our generosity with our praise to God. So it's a lot bigger than that. But there is this unique aspect of our financial resources. The Bible addresses uh, massively. I mean, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, one of the most recurring themes is offerings, sacrifices, mm-hmm. giving to God in the Old Testament, uh, uh, you know, laying down what you have for, you know, Jesus says, um, you know, really calls us to look at everything we have as a gift from him. So from all through the Bible, there's a sense that our material possessions are meant to be used for something more than just us. But also uh, there, there's a sense that, that God has been good and generous. And, and so there is, and there's also warnings uh, that, that the Bible gives about being consumed by consuming and being owned by the things that we, that we've purchased or have. Mm-hmm. And so generosity is much bigger, but there's something very specific in terms of warnings and challenges about material things that can consume our hearts, consume our lives and become damaging. And so Jesus speaks to that and the Bible speaks to that. Mm. Yeah. Um, I've heard people talk about, you'll be blessed mm-hmm. if you're generous toward God, toward his work, if you're generous yeah. towards other people. Yeah. Is that true? I mean, do we yeah. really, are we promised blessings yeah. Yeah. if we, uh, if we are generous? I would say that that's not just TV preachers trying to get your money. Uh, although sometimes it is TV preachers trying to get your money. So you know, people can take something that's true and abuse it, right? No doubt. Um, no and, doubt. and so, but, but the, I would say, is it true that when we grow in generosity, we'll be blessed? I would say absolutely 100% every time. The problem is some people define it as if you give money, you'll get more money. Right. And I've even heard, I've heard some of these, uh, some of these, uh, I want to be careful. I'm a pastor. I don't want to be, you know, cast stones, but, right, yeah. but I've heard people say things like, well, if you give a hundred dollars, you know, before you know it, you'll get a thousand back and someone right. will tell a story. You know, I, I donated a hundred dollars and then I got a check. I wasn't expecting it. And it got surprises with provision at no times, doubt. but sometimes if you give a hundred dollars, what you have is a hundred dollars less. <laughs> and, and there's no guarantee that, that we want to, we can't define God's blessing as money. Mm-hmm. Uh, I gave money. I get more money back. Uh, but I do believe when we're generous, generous and generous with our material goods, that there's always blessing coming back our way. Sometimes that blessing is just the, the joy, the joy of having been part of something that touched mm-hmm. a life. Sometimes that blessing is, sometimes that blessing may be God providing more material things. Sometimes that blessing is just a peace in mm-hmm. your heart, which, you know, yes, most people, what would you pay for actual internal peace? Most people say, I'd give, I'd give almost anything. You know, so, so there's, there's other, there's blessings that I think that are way more valuable than a few more bucks. Mm-hmm. And so, but I do believe, you know, the book of Malachi, uh, it's, it's the one time in the Bible where God actually says, test me. I, I, I just had a conversation with a church member recently who asked me, you know, the Bible says, don't test the Lord your God. Right. And then in, <laughs> in Malachi, it says, test me and see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out an overflowing blessing. Not just a blessing, but like right. an overflowing, abounding blessing. Uh, and so I, I found an article and sent it to this person just talking about, talks about how, um, there's testing God, you know, questioning his character, questioning his goodness. Right. There's testing to see if God will fulfill what he's promised to right. fulfill. Those are, di- those are different. Right. Um, and, and so, uh, I, you know, I absolutely believe that there is blessing every time we're generous 
with our time, with our words, with our care and with our love, with our material goods. But those blessings aren't always apples for apples. I gave this money, I get more money right. back. And, and anyone who tells you that is selling something. Right. And they're probably living way better than they should be because right. they may be their motivation might may very well be to get you to uh, what, what they should say is if you're more generous, I get blessed right. uh, with more stuff. And, and and that's and I said as a pastor trying to be careful, but sometimes people are their motives are wrong. But any kind of generosity, I believe, uh, will yield some kind of blessing from God. And if you pay attention, you'll see it all, all over. Well, and I just had this thought when you if you look at monetary blessing, well, mm -hmm. then that really wouldn't be generosity. Yeah. That would be more like investment, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. I'm going to invest my money in this thing yeah, because I know yeah. I'm going to get something yeah, back. Yeah. Um, and that's not yeah. generosity is yeah. giving yeah. Of, of yourself. I've, I've heard, I've actually heard people say, uh, well, if I give financially now, so I'll, I'll, I'll get more blessings in heaven. And they actually, it's almost a transactional. I'm giving this, so I'm going to get, you know, like a, a bigger uh, mansion than you in heaven kind of thing. And I'm like, well, there, there, there are blessings in this life and blessings forevermore. But they be, they almost become so transactional about it that I think that that's not the heart and the spirit of what Jesus is trying to teach us and and what the scriptures teach about generosity. It's we're generous because God's been good to us. We're generous because it brings joy. We're generous because it, it impacts the lives of others. But if, if it's like, well, I'm giving so I get more now and I get more in eternity, that just doesn't feel like the heart of Jesus. And that definitely wouldn't be from a joyful place. Right? No, no, no. <laughs> it's a strategic business. You know, it's my eternal business investment. Now, now Jesus does say store up treasures in heaven. Right. And so when we invest in the things that last forever, people, God's glory, um, there's things that, that last forever. And he's saying, don't put all your stuff into things that burn up and are gone. But there, so there, there are things that go on forever, but there's not this one for one correspondence. We can become very transactional with God and I think we have to be careful of that. Well, a few minutes ago, you talked about Jesus giving warnings. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about Jesus giving warnings about falling in love with yeah. money yeah. and the things that money yeah. can buy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I've heard people say things like, if you want to see where your heart's at, you know, open your checkbook right. or your credit card uh, report and look at what, you know, what it is, you know, how much have I put into what sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a pretty good, and I, I think there's something to that. It's, it's not an absolute, but I think it can give you a little insight, right? Uh, and so Jesus, I think Jesus warned us. He, he, one of the things that Jesus said is, you can only have one master or one you know, thing, being, person that rules your life. There's only, there's only you know, kind of the throne of your heart, the center of your life. There's only room for one. And Jesus basically says, you know, Seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, put him first. Don't store up treasures in, in, on earth, but store up treasures in heaven. He keeps directing us toward making sure it's the right thing. And so Jesus says, you, you cannot serve both God and stuff. The word he uses, the, the older word is mammon, but it's just uh, right. material goods and the things that money and what money can buy. You can't, you know, God can't be first and a consumption of things first at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I think Jesus warns us of that because one of the easiest things to get to be placed above God and to rule our lives is the gathering of stuff, the working for stuff, the consuming of stuff, the tending and taking care of stuff. It just, it can become all consuming. And we all know people who've been there and we maybe can say, I've had times in my life where I'm there, or maybe some people say I'm there right now where the, the consuming driving force of my life is, is the, the earning and multiplying and investing of, money and stuff and that consumes my thoughts and my heart and my attention and yes god gets an hour and 10 minutes on a sunday and i love jesus but honestly this is what my life is about jesus would say be careful right. uh and so uh, and, and and another another thing is that jesus said the love of money is the root of all kinds I of evil ask yeah you that. yeah yeah and he didn't say money is the root of all kinds right. of evil but the love of money so it's our disposition towards mm -hmm. it uh, you know money and material things are neutral uh but how we love them, how we respond to them, if we let them possess us and control us, that becomes a source. And, and how Jesus kind of puts this open, the root of all kinds of evil. It can take you to all kinds of bad places. And I've, I've watched people who have, who have basically devastated their family because they're pursuing a career to earn money for their family. Mm -hmm. And in trying to provide yeah. for their family and give the best for their family, 
they don't give themselves to their family because they're they're consumed with more 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 mm -hmm. and uh, what i saw this uh, there was a church by uh, by the church i served in california in southern california years ago that they always had these little clever sayings on their on this Sorry. board right. and it was like the letters that they would do in the box and hang on the thing and they put it and some of them were really bad some were really like one of my, my least favorite one was where will you spend eternity smoking or non-smoking <laughs> i thought just horrible apocalyptic sort of a judgmental um church sign uh but one time around Christmas time, they had one that I thought was, it just was sweet. And it said, uh, your children need your presence more than your presence. They need your, you with them more than the stuff you buy for them. And I thought that was one that was actually thoughtful and, and worth putting mm -hmm. on the sign. But 90% of them were things I wouldn't want on a church sign. But, um, and so, so we have to be careful that while consuming and earning and, and tending to things, we don't miss what this life is really about. And it's so much more than that. And so that I think that Jesus warns us to be very, very careful. I have yeah. uh, interacted with some people who have a lot of stuff, yeah. a lot of money, who have been some of the most generous people yeah. um, that I've ever met. Yeah. Um, so I, I think you're agreeing. There's nothing wrong with having money, no. right? No. It's the pursuit of it. It's what yeah. place you elevate it. Yeah. Because the truth is, if you have a lot of money, then mm -hmm. you have potential to do a lot yeah. for God. Yeah. Um, you're able to give back and even more. Mm -hmm. um, and so for some people, um, there's a book that I read many years ago called Anointed for Business. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole idea is that for some of us, this is where we're put, yeah. is in the business world. Yeah, absolutely. And God can use us in many ways in that environment. Like everybody's yeah. not going to work in a church and yeah. you know be yeah. a pastor, but yeah. um, there's lots of different places he can put us. And for yeah. some, it is in the business world where you will yeah. have a lot of resources, yeah. but then yeah. that opens up some great opportunities. Yeah. Right. yeah. I know, I know a couple of people in the community we're in here uh, who have partnered. Uh, they're both people who in their, in their particular uh, work world do pretty well financially. And they together, some other folks have helped to start a hospital in Guatemala that, that cares for lots of children and all the doctors there are Christian people. So they bring medical care and the love of Jesus, but they've also, been very involved in a local Christian school in our area here uh, in terms of uh, serving on the board, giving financially, uh, but again, generous, and also uh, giving to Shoreline Church. Mm -hmm. And you so say, these are people who are, who are doing well financially, but they're you know, helping with international mission, helping with a Christian education opportunity, helping with a local church. And, and those are some people that over the years of these different things that those some of those things might not exist if these people hadn't lived with very open hearts and very open hands and i think that when they look at the results of that and how it how it impacts people's mm -hmm. lives being joyfully generous is you go man look at all the kids lives that have gone through trinity christian high school oh, before it was calvary high school you know, but look at all the lives that have been touched look at all the families that have been cared for in this area mm -hmm. of guatemala look at all the the people that have come to faith in jesus through shoreline church and and and, and these people are not arrogant people would never sit around and say, look what I did. But they look right. and say, look how good, how good God has been to provide and then put my heart in a place where I can actually become a conduit of blessing to mm -hmm. others. I mean, that's, that's yeah, people and, and people with a very small amount can be just as generous right. in terms of the heart and the condition. But sometimes people with more resources, they can have that kind of impact that, that, you know, people who are, are very resourced financially and love Jesus and are very generous, man, God uses them in powerful ways to be a blessing. And I, I think that's something that I'd love to see more of that in people's hearts and lives. Yeah. So I always love to go from the philosophical conceptual to the where the rubber hits the road. Yeah. What are some steps that you would uh, uh, share with those yeah. who want to grow yeah. in this yeah. area of yeah. joyful generosity? Boy, I, I would, I would start with just a, attitude and disp dispositional kind of assessment, self-assessment. Do I get it? Do I, do I look at, do I, do I believe that God is good? Do I recognize that everything is a gift from him? That every, uh, James says, every good and perfect gift mm -hmm. comes from above from the father of heavenly lights. I mean, every good gift comes from God's hand. Do I, do I get that? Do I understand that? Do I live with a sense of God, you've been good to me. And even if I, if I have a modest amount or if I have a lot, that God has been good and what I have is a gift. I think that's that puts us in a posture where it's even a possibility. Mm -hmm. If our attitude is wrong and if it's all mine and, and I earned it, it's me, 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 and, and it's because of my skills and my, you know, my uh, my business sense or my hard work. I mean, those are all part of it. And I believe that we've got to okay. do our part to work hard. Mm -hmm. But so check, you know, assess assess kind of where I'm at personally. And then I would just say start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Just start start somewhere. Start giving something. 
and watch what happens and, and, and do it prayerfully. Say, God, I, I, I don't know if I have enough to give. I, I, you know, I know I spend a lot on me, but I, I want to start to, uh, start to do something to help your church, to help, um, you know, a, a Christian nonprofit that's, that's helping in, you know, human trafficking and getting young women out of sex trafficking, or this, that's, that's helping with, um, feeding hungry people in our community and they're, and they're sharing the love of Jesus. You know, again, generosity as a Christian is giving towards those things that lift up Jesus. It's not, I once had somebody ask me, well, if I give towards my alma mater, if I give towards this political campaign, is that count as my joyful generosity? So well, that can be joyful and that can be generous, but it's not giving towards the work of Jesus because these aren't you know, necessarily definitively Christ centered ministries or organizations that are sharing the love of Jesus. But, and so no problem giving to those things, but make sure you're giving towards the work of Jesus, mm-hmm. towards the lo- local church, a Christian nonprofit, a mission organization. And I do encourage people to be, be aware that if they're part of a local church, um, it takes a lot to do what churches do and make sure some of what they're giving is, you know, for Sherry and I, we always give our first portion that we've had committed to shoreline. And then uh, we give to, to other things, mm-hmm. but we always start, uh, start with the local church. Cause if everybody gave towards that thing out there, every local church was shut down. Mm-hmm. And so, right. yeah. Yeah. Well, as we're con- we're talking about evangelism, is is the, mm-hmm. this is the big thing here? Is how do yeah. we tie in our own personal spiritual growth yeah. and in evangelism, or our witness, or our opportunity yeah. to share uh, Jesus with this world? Yeah. How does not being generous or stinginess, mm-hmm. or holding on to our resources, yeah. how does that get in the way of yeah. us yeah. being a good witness or yeah. sharing Jesus with this yeah. world? I would just say that. That more than we more than we recognize, people are watching us as Christians. If we say, "I believe in Jesus, I love Jesus, I'm a follower of Jesus," even if we're not the type that kind of honks the horn loud and goes, you know, but we just people just know, oh, you know, she she's a she's a Christian, he's a Christian. Um, if we are known to be cheap, stingy, if you if you want someone's time or energy or help or care or resources, don't go to him, don't go to her. They it's it's all about them. That reflects on Jesus. And if we then want to turn around and somehow be able to share with somebody that, that, that there's this God who loves you and, and you know, if you were to follow Jesus, you could have a life like mine. Oh, a stingy, self-centered, you know, life. My, my, like I said, with my parents, uh, they were not generous towards the things of Jesus, but they were generous. And if they looked at a Christian who was stingy, it would look and say, what, why would I want anything to do with that, mm-hmm. um, that approach to life? And, and I think there's also people who are not Christians do have a sense of what they th- how they think Christians should be, in and, and very very deep and profound ways sometimes. Sure. Quick say, that's not how you should be acting, or you know that that's not what a Christian acts like. And I think when people when people imagine what a follower of Jesus would look like, you say, well, "What are your top five things or top ten things that you think a Christian ought to be?" Mm. I don't think stingy would be on the list. I think Christians should be generous. Christians should be you know, if if God's real and if that's true. And I'm not sure if it is or not. You know, right. the, the non-believer might think or say or ponder, but. They're watching, and if they see a lack of generosity, I think it, it cuts off our opportunity to really reflect who Jesus is. Then we're going to tell about Jesus, who's the most generous being in the universe, but we who follow him are nothing like him. It, it's, there's, a, there's a disconnect there. So then if we are generous, yeah. how does that open up the door to, to share the Jesus with the world? I think it gets people's attention, because we live in a time right now where people are, I think, are particularly guarded and and you know, kind of possessive of what they have and what's theirs. And when we live with open hearts and open hands and are quick to respond, mm. I think the world looks and, and, and goes, that's unusual. Um, that's beautiful and attractive. Mm. And I, I think in some cases they're going to go, and that's what I think if Jesus is who they say he is, I think that's how he would be. And don't we want people looking at us and seeing if there is, if Jesus is out there and if he's real I can see reflections of him, not perfectly, mm-hmm. but I see reflections of him in your life. And generosity, uh, I think, reflects the presence of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I think it opens the door. And and then there's that powerful word that when people see you doing something, being generous, and they, or maybe being generous to someone who's done nothing for you, or being generous to somebody who's who's worked against you or has been harsh toward you, uh, they ask that great theological question: Why? Why do you do that? Why are you generous? Why do you care about others? And I, I, I have this response when anybody asks me why. I respond. I shared this this last Sunday when I was preaching. When somebody says, "Why do you live that way? Why do you do that? Or why don't you do that?" Mm-hmm. I always respond with the same question. I ask a question back. It's very rabbinical. Jesus asks questions to questions. I'll say, "Do you really want to know? Why are you so generous? Do you really want to know? 
Why do you care about other people when they don't care about you? Do you, do you really want to know? And almost every person at that point, they're, at least they're curious. Right. So they've asked you, and if I say, do you really want to know? Almost every time, and I, and I'm, I mean, I've had hundreds of those conversations mm-hmm. through the years. I've been a Christian for a long time now. And I'll say, do you really want to know? And, and people will go, yeah. I say, well, I, I need to share where it comes from. And that opens up the door to talk about the one who's been generous to me, the one who's been good to me. It opens the door to give. And I don't like, let me give you the whole, you know, a whole sermon and a whole, uh, you, know, preach, you know, preach the whole gospel, but I'm going to share how Jesus changed my life. And if they're open and curious, I'll share with them how Jesus could change their life. But I'm going to start by just sharing how Jesus has transformed my life and how I'm responding out of what he's done for me and who he is in me. And I'll usually, after I've shared some, say, does that make sense and do, do you do you want to hear more about that and many people are like yeah that's it's 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 sort of puzzling i don't mm-hmm. get that i don't live that way i don't think that way and you do and i find that interesting and if there are, you have a relationship that can open the door to ongoing conversations about jesus i'm thinking yeah. of you being rabbinical and asking questions you have a question that you like to ask people to get them thinking yeah it says yeah what would happen to the church mm-hmm. if everybody gave the way you gave yeah uh, <coughs> Talk about that that a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I ask that question about lots of things, but with yes, give, you you know, with giving, I'll, I'll say to people, and I'll say from the pulpit sometimes, you know, if everyone who's part of Shoreline Church gave just like you give, with the same heart and the same generosity, would that be good for the church or would that be bad for the church? And some people have to think and go, well, the church have to, if everybody gave like I give, the church have to shut down mm-hmm. because I don't give anything. I think, well, and, and to let, at that point, I don't try to chastise or wag a finger. I just let the Holy Spirit speak to their hearts. And if somebody said, man, I think it'd be great. Man, if, if everybody gave the way I give, we what this church could do far more than we do. Oh, that would be cool. It's like, so it goes, it kind of, it, it's a two-edged sword. It cuts both ways. And so for people to stop and say, if everyone had the same attitude and heartbeat and practice of generosity that I have, would that be good for the work of Jesus? And I, I would hope that we could all say, oh, it'd be great. And if we can't, maybe it's time to sort of slow down and say, okay, Lord, maybe I need to adjust this aspect of my spiritual life and take a step into generosity. Mm. We've talked about a lot. Mm-hmm. Boy, this has been a lot. I, I, mm-hmm. I love generosity. It's one of, I don't know, it's near and dear to my heart. Yeah. And, and it is a hard topic. It is. I it is. personally, and in conversation, <laughs> uh, as we wrap up, mm-hmm. and any last thoughts um, I know you touched on some practical yeah. steps. Any mm-hmm. that you maybe want to revisit, or anything you want to just uh, yeah. send us off with as yeah. we close up. Yeah. Well, I I have heard a pastor doing this. I've never done this, but I've heard a pastor say to people, start giving something. You know, every every week for the next you know four or six weeks. Even start you know try tithing. Start giving ten percent of what you you know what you gain each week. Um, to the work of Jesus, and see if it doesn't change your life, change your attitudes. And if you aren't convinced that this is worth doing will give you your money back. <laughs> and I, I, it sounds complicated, you know, <laughs> but, I, but I would say to people, try it and see and see what God does through your heart and life. I can tell you for yeah. me, it has really been a, a neat thing. And I'm not yeah. there, right? I'm, I'm not there at all, constantly seeking to, to grow in yeah. this. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that the, this this time of engaging this yeah. is going to change some lives. Yeah. Um, I know today I'm encouraged about the, the situation yeah. that we're working through yeah. and yeah. Um, I think I'm a little bit more jazzed and excited yeah. than I was coming in here yeah. to see what Good. we can do to make a difference. So thank you for your time. It's and, a joy. Uh, it has been fun. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your podcast app, make sure to subscribe to hear more. We'll see you next time.